Hello, fellow travelers. I'm Nomad Jim, a retired, minimalist, solo, full-time, slow traveler. Thanks for stopping by. If you're going to be traveling as a part-time or full-time slow traveler, you're going to pack differently than you would if you're just going on a short vacation. You're going to want to focus on taking the essentials. So what are those essentials for you? And what type of luggage would you want to use? And are you going to do carry-on only? Or are you going to check your luggage? These are all different options that are available to you when you travel as a part-time or full-time slow traveler. So in this video, we're going to talk about those options that are available to you and help you to decide what works best for you and the way that you travel. This is video number six in a series of videos that I'm doing about 10 key things that you need to address before you start your part-time or full-time slow travel journey. So let's get started. So as I mentioned earlier, you're not packing for a vacation. You're going to be packing for an extended period of time, maybe months. So you're going to pack differently. And for me, I try to satisfy two seemingly contradictory things. One is to take what I need and also to take what's going to make me happy. So let me break that down a little bit more for you. The first thing to think about is what type of luggage do you want to use? And I find for most part-time and full-time slow travelers, they want to focus on trying to get it to a small enough amount as possible so that they can do carry-on only. And I understand the rationale for doing that. When you do carry-on only, you have a lighter weight to be carrying around. You don't have to check in the luggage. Therefore, you don't have to wait for it at the luggage carousel after you arrive at your destination. You don't have to worry about it getting lost either. It's always with you, so you don't worry about it being lost. But there are some cons to doing carry-on only. One is that it's like a ball and chain. Everywhere you go, it's going to be there with you, and you've got to carry it along with you everywhere. So when you're standing in different lines, when you're going through security, going through immigration, when you're walking through the airport, when you're going to a restaurant or a store or to the restroom, you've got to take it with you. Now, if you're traveling with somebody, maybe you can have them watch over it when you go to the restroom. But still, it's with you all the time and you've got to deal with it. And then when it comes time to board the plane, you're going to feel the pressure to get on the plane as early as possible to claim some of that very precious overhead space to put your luggage into. So there's that stress of pushing your way up to the front so you can get on the plane quicker so that you can get some space for your luggage. So there's a little bit of stress involved with that. Also, a lot of airlines have limits on the weight for the luggage that you bring on board. So some of the airlines in Asia, for instance, have a seven kilogram limit, which is about 15 pounds. So that's not very much. And more than likely, no matter how small your suitcase is and how minimal that you're packing, it's probably going to be more than 15 pounds. So there's always that stress also of wondering whether or not you're going to be able to take your bag onto the flight or whether it's going to end up having to be checked in. For me personally, I prefer to check my luggage rather than doing carry-on. And the reason for doing that is I don't really mind having to wait at the carousel for my bag to show up there, and I'm not worried about it getting lost. I have had my bag delayed a little bit before, but I've never had it lost, and I'm not really worried about that happening. And it makes for a lot less stress for the experience of going through the airport. I don't have to carry it around with me all over the airport while I'm waiting for the flight. So it makes it a little easier for me in that way too. So I really do prefer having my luggage checked instead of doing carry-on only. And another reason I prefer to check my luggage is that I prefer to have a slightly larger suitcase than what you would normally have for a carry-on only suitcase. And the reason for that is I like to have a few more items than what most people will carry with them. So let's move on to the next question, which is what types of things, clothes, etc., do you take with you 
when you're traveling. Now, I consider myself a minimalist in most respects, but when it comes to traveling and my clothes, I'm not quite as minimalist as a lot of people are. I know there are a lot of full-time travelers, part-time travelers, who will travel with just three shirts, three pair of underwear, three pair of socks, and two pair of shoes, one that they're wearing and one that they pack. So yes, it is possible to travel that way, but for me, it's not enjoyable. And it doesn't satisfy that second part of what I'm trying to do when I travel. Not only taking what I need, but also taking what's gonna make me happy. If I have only three shirts, then I'm gonna get bored very quickly with wearing the same three shirts over and over and over again. And if you're on a short trip, then that's not a big deal. You're not really gonna notice it that much. But if you're gone for three, four months, think about how many times you're gonna wear each one of those three shirts during your trip. So I know for myself, I'm gonna get very bored and it's gonna just make me feel miserable that I'm wearing that same old shirt again that I just wore the other day. And also the washing that I'm gonna to have to do, especially with the underwear and the socks. It's gonna be like every other day, having to wash those items in the sink, more than likely, because you're maybe not gonna have a washing machine. And then you're probably not gonna have a dryer either. So then you have to wait for them to dry as well before you can wear them again. So it's just an ongoing cycle of going through the same clothes over and over again, and it will become very boring. For me, it would. So for me, I prefer to have a variety of different colors of shirts and also different styles of shirts. That way, I don't feel quite as bored with the things that I'm gonna be wearing because I'm gonna be gone for a long period of time. So I usually will have at least a week's worth of shirts, maybe throw in one or two extra for good measure. I'll have a week's worth of underwear, a week's worth of socks. And that seems to work out pretty well. I don't get bored with the kind of clothes that I'm wearing that way. I don't have to wash too frequently. So it works out pretty well for me. And it keeps me happy. I don't get miserable thinking that I'm wearing the same old thing over and over again. Now there are ways to cut down on the amount of washing that you do. One with shirts is to use merino wool shirts. And all of the shirts that I take with me are merino wool. This one that I'm wearing here is actually merino wool. It may not even look like it, but it is. And for anybody who's never worn merino wool before, you may think wool and it's probably itchy and not very comfortable. But merino wool is not like that at all. It's very comfortable, it's soft, it wicks away moisture, and it, it is also odor repellent. So you can wear a shirt, hang it up overnight, and the next morning you could wear it again, theoretically. Of course, I'm not gonna do that because I don't like to wear the same thing over and over again. But you could do that if you really wanted to. So people who do travel with just three shirts, that's usually what they're doing. They'll have three shirts and they won't have to wash those shirts between the different wearings that they do. You know, after a certain period of time, they may wash them just to refresh them a little bit, but it's not necessary to wash them after every wear. So that's one way to cut down on the amount of laundry that you do with shirts. So that just leaves mainly the underwear and the socks and having to do those, generally on a weekly basis is what I do. Now I tend to spend most of my time in places that have a warm climate. So I'm generally wearing shorts. So I have a few pair of shorts that I wear and maybe I'll have one pair of jeans that I wear when I'm, especially when I'm flying because it can be kind of cold on planes sometimes. And that's really all I'm wearing as far as pants or shorts go. And then for shoes, I usually have one pair that I'm wearing when I'm traveling and then two other pairs of shoes as well to go along with that. So that gives me a variety of colors and styles of shoes as well to wear with the shorts and the shirts that I'm wearing. So by doing this, I'm taking what I need, but I'm also taking what makes me happy. And it's a little more than what a minimalist would take, but 
by taking those extra items in a different variety to give me a little bit more variety in the things that I wear, then it makes me happy and I feel comfortable with wearing the things that I'm wearing during that extended period of time that I'm traveling. So I've been talking mainly about the luggage that you have and whether you do carry on only or you check in your luggage. But in addition to that piece of luggage that I check in, I also have a backpack that I carry with me on board the plane. And in that backpack, I have my laptop, I have my passport, um, sunglasses, all of the other smaller items that I am taking with me that I wouldn't normally check in with my check-in luggage. In addition to those items that you would normally take with you, like the, the laptop and the sunglasses and medications, things like that, that you take along with you in a backpack or in a purse or some other carry-on item that you would pack it into, there are also other things that I take that are kind of unique essential items. And I did a video on that, the items that I take, and you can click on the link above to watch that video and see some of those unique items that I also bring along with me. How do you decide what you're going to take with you on your travels? What are your essential items? And do you do carry-on only or do you check your luggage? Leave your thoughts in the comments down below. In the next video in this series, we'll talk about how to decide what accommodations to use when you're traveling. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, let's get out there and travel.